Mapping Services. I'm here with uh, Grant Williams, and we're going to run through um, project-wise searching. Show ways to do searches. So we'll leave some time at the end for questions. But if you have something as we're going along, throw it in the chat, and we'll try to monitor that as well. So I think uh, Brandon has a PowerPoint here that he's going to share. So if you're ready, Brandon. All right, can everyone see my screen and hear me as well? Yep, we can see and hear you. I can hear it. All right, check this. Okay, looks like we're good to go. All right, so we're going to go over some project-wise searching. Um, we're first going to start out in project-wise explore. There are several ways to search for folders and documents, so that's what we're trying to cover here today. So to start off, uh, most of you may have already used this, uh, but if not, in the top of ProjectWise Explorer, there's a search option, and you have several different options under this, this um, drop down here. Uh, first, you have all content. So this is literally searching inside text and everything. So uh, it's very broad. So if you want to list everything, all content is probably the best option. Uh, full text search um, is exactly like all content, except it excludes environment attributes. Um, so those are things such as uh, document attributes. So in, in theory, this uh, do this um, similar search. And then document and folder properties, of course, is a little more specific because it is including just the folder properties of a project and uh, documents as well. Uh, and under settings, you can change settings on how the basic search works. Um, so you can kind of actually look at that. And if you open up settings, there's a tab there that you can click on. Uh, I think it's the only other tab there that kind of shows you what all content, full text search, and the document for folder properties are actually searching. So there's some check boxes you can check to look at that. So here we're just going to do a quick demo on uh, quick search. So the first thing you want to do is actually select the folder that you want the full or the quick search to actually go for. Um, we're going to do a full text search here. So I want to look in um, all documents under 01 Active Projects that has the word green in it. Um, now, if you're searching for a PDF in order for the quick search to actually find that PDF, the PDF does need to be OCR'd. Um, you can do that easily if you are a Bluebeam user. Um, uh, you may be familiar with OCR and those PDFs. So here we actually got that PDF and that county folder. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and open that PDF and we can search this OCR PDF and see that green is actually uh, mentioned in there once, which you can see on the title page there. Now, if you also turned on vertical OCRing, uh, you can do text that are vertical like this PID number here. Um, so we're going to go back and do another search, but for that PID instead of a word to kind of show you that it does it does horizontal and vertical text search uh, depending on your OCR. Um, you can easily do vertical searching or vertical OCRing in Bluebeam, uh, but we're not going to cover that here in this uh, presentation. So here I'm searching for that PID. Um, so it's going to look through every document under one active projects and find where that PID um, is referenced in, in the documents. Um, so you can see the folders no longer there because I didn't search for green and green return county. Now I'm actually going to take out the PID and the name. Um, and after I, I did see that it was in the description as well. Um, so we're going to take the PID out of the name and the description to show you and, and prove that it's not searching based on that name. That's actually searching for um, the OCR PID number that's in vertical. So now we don't have that PID in the name or in the description. So there's no ties to this in regards to document properties. So now you can see that it still returned that PDF document. Um, now I did do a full text search. Um, if I did folder and document properties, uh, you can you, you can kind of see where those properties come from. Now to also show it's not just PDFs, it's it could be any file um, that you know it can read such as a text file, um, which is another good one. So if you have text files out there and you're trying to look for a certain uh, note that you might have put into a document, um, you can do this as well. So here I just searched my name and I can open up this text file and see that 
it found my name here. Um, so that's some cool things to easily search for documents containing certain specifications. Now, there is also the advanced side search. That was just a quick basic search. Um, so if you actually click on a folder and right click, you can click on advanced search here and you'll get this dialog where you can do a document search or do search builder. So first we're actually gonna just go over this document search here. So we're gonna go over that. And here, this is actually what the dialog looks like. So if I go back, if I click this first option, the document search, this dialog populate. And there's several uh, panels in this document. So we're actually under the general tab. So you can see that you can search off document properties. So you can do name, description, versions, workflow states. So there's quite a bit of things that you can search based on documents. Um, so you can see a wide variety of why this would be an advanced search. You can also do file type. Um, so if you want to do a file name or the size of the file, you can do that. And the folder. So you can actually search on name and description of folder. And you can actually see that when I right clicked, it's looking in the 01 active projects. So if you right clicked on the wrong one and this dialog is already populated, you just click change and you can select the folder that you want to perform your search on. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an advanced search. For starters, I'm going to search in the 100664 PID. And all I need to do is click to highlight this PID and right click. And we're going to perform an advanced search on this PID. Here we're going to actually choose the search form option and hit OK. Here we are looking for a document file name. For example, if I want to search for all DGNs in this PID, I would do star dot DGN. And to verify down here in the look in under folder, we can see that we are searching inside this folder here. OK. So next, we also have a show results in new window. I like to check this on. If this is checked off, your results are actually going to show in the document list here. For example, we'll go ahead and OK with a new window open. OK, now we have all of our documents that have a .dgn that are inside the 100664 PID. Here I can select on any DGN that I'd like to. I can also scroll through the buttons through here. I can also go to the last document in the first document. Here it tells me where this document is located. Or if I'd like to go to this document, I can click on the document desired, right click, open folder, and with my document list behind, I now have the DGN I selected with all the other DGNs in that side of that folder. So that was actually a training video that I've created a little while back um, on how to do an advanced search. Uh, we had somebody request, how do I get all the DGNs in a PID? Um, so that was a um, example of that advanced search for that dialogue. Uh, and as you do notice, it, it did take wildcard search. So I did that star.dgn. So it did get everything with the um, with .dgn in it. So also in that dialog, we were looking at the general tab here. We can also do the full text search. So that's similar to the quick search that we did pr uh, in the first slide and the previous slide of this, um, where you actually get more advanced options on what you search for. So here you have, what are you looking for? So you can enter the text string you want to search for, and you can choose where to look inside. So you have different content to look inside, and you can kind of specify or restrict your search uh, by the return documents here. So first we're gonna look at looking look inside. So there's actually a drop down, and there's only two options, but you have file content. So Previously, I showed how to search for something inside a file, so I can specify file content. Or I can do the project-wise attributes, which will search for the general properties and the environment attributes inside um, project-wise. Now, I can restrict that search by returning the documents from my look for. So depending on what I look for, I can actually select um, if I want to include 
the exact phrase. So if I want to look for Brandon, and that's the exact phrase I want to look for, that's another option I can do. Um, if I have only a few words that I know that I'm looking for, like I want, um, I, I don't know a good example for this, but if you had like an LPA or not LPA stuff um, or notes, you can search for containing all those words. So I want I want it to contain this PID and this county. What are, what are all those documents, um, including any of the words? So I can type in a bunch of words and it, it would brought it would actually um, expand that search out. Or I can do not including all the words. So it searches for documents containing all the words. So if I want something that I don't want anything that has you know Franklin in it, then I can I can exclude that. So next, we're actually going to go over the search builder. This is another advanced search option you have in ProjectWise Explorer. Um, so we can select whichever folder we want to look in. So in this scenario, I'm doing 01 Active Projects. If I right click, I can select Advanced Search, and I get that dialog again. Um, so before we selected the document search, now we want to select the search builder, which gives us a, a more advanced search searching capabilities. So when I select that, I actually get this dialog here and you can see there's a look for. So I can look for documents or folders. Um, I can uh, associate the view that I want to see in my search. I usually just name that for the default. Um, and there's a type of uh, criteria, a property and attribute. So I have a video on we're going to go through what those are, but there are quite a bit of things. And essentially what this is doing is building a query. So you can see it's this text box right here um, that is looking for a document in 01 Active Projects. And whatever I go through to define my criteria, I can add that to my list. So this allows us to create a more advanced uh, searching um, mechanism for us to find what we're looking for. Um, a, a good example that what you would use this for is if you want to look at project properties. So most of you may know under the document list, this is the properties that come with every project. Um, these are updated daily uh, and nightly. So as long as Ellis is up to date, your project properties will be up to date, uh, which makes it even easier for you to search for things um, that are real time. So here's a video I have um, for the advanced searching. So here I'm going to go ahead and right click on active projects to the advanced search. We're going to open up that search builder. So here I can specify documents or work area and folders. For this example, we're going to do work areas and folders. And we have different types, but I'm going to look at work area properties. Now all work area properties or uh, PIDs, they are of type Ohio DOT projects. So that's the only one you should select when doing work area properties. And now you can kind of see that list that I showed on the previous slide, uh, but now I can specify what I want to search for. So if I want to search for an environmental project manager, I can click the three dots in the value here and I can you know, do equals between greater than or less than if it's a date. Um, so I'm going to do value like star R star. So I want everything with uh, R in it essentially. So this does take us uh, wild cards. So down here I did add criteria. So I added it to the list for the search. You want to make sure you hit add criteria. And then you can click apply and you can see in the background in my document list, I have all the projects. So now if I select a project and look at its work area properties or project properties, I can see the environmental project manager. Okay, looks like they have an R in their middle initial. Um, I can look at this one and see, okay, there's quite a bit of R's in this name as well. Um, now R is pretty broad. Um, so if it, I mean, usually you would search for your name if you wanted to look for everything that said Brandon Williams in it. Um, that's that's what I would search off. But that's a basic example, um, and I kind of showed that just so you know that you can do wildcards as well. So moving on, um, we talked about the basic search, the quick searches, the advanced searches. Um, now we also have global and personal saved searches. Um, some of you may already use this. I know I've helped a couple people set this up on, on their a personal level, um, but we have what we call saved searches. So with every project, you can see in the bottom, there's a saved searches option. Now this is also a data source level. So you have your work area and your data source level of saved searches. 
Here is an example of the work area safe search. You can see that there's two options. We have global and we have personal. Global can only be created by administrators, um, such as my Jack, um, Jack, myself, and uh, Kyle, uh, and JD, there's a few others, uh, but essentially we can create these global searches uh, that can be seen by all users. Uh, I want to note down here, we actually added a global search to all new projects going forward. Um, you can see in this example, we have files checked out under the global. So we created a saved search. So every time I want to look at files that are checked out for this project, I can double click on this and it's going to bring back all the documents that are checked out in our document list. Now, if there's something that um, you want personally to yourself, something that might benefit you more than others, you can create your own uh, save searches as well. So users can create um, save searches specific to them. Uh, and it is account specific, so no one else will see your personal safe searches. Uh, so as of now, we only have the one global search in the projects going forward. If there's other searches that you guys think you can think about, um, we can do that as well. You just got to let us know and I'll, I'll get into how, we, how you can do that later on. So here's an example of how to save a search. Here I'm going to do an O1 Active Projects. Now this is a data source save search, and I'm going to do search builder. So I'm not. This isn't project specific. This is data source. So I want to save this uh, throughout the data source. Uh, here I'm choosing documents and general properties, and I wanted to search off uh, created by. So I want to look off those document properties created by, and here I can select myself. Now we got to make sure we add criteria to the search. Now I've added that uh, to the list or the document list here. Here I can click save search and do a save as. Um, and you can see that there, there are quite a bit of uh, global or data source saved searches. But I want to save this under the personal since it's for me. Uh, you won't be able again to save in global. Uh, you do have to be an administrator to do that. So here I'm going to name it my documents um, since I'm looking for documents in this data source that have been created by me. After saving it, it automatically runs the search. So you can see in our document list here, we have all these files that I've created or that have been created by me. Um, I can actually go down now to the save search and select personal, and I can see my document. So if I click on that once, it performs that search automatically, just like it did when I just closed it. So there we have all those documents as well. So that's one way to save the search. Um, here I'm actually going to go into a project and go into the save searches as well to kind of show you that is the pro work area level, not the data source. So here we're going to do an advanced search and do a search builder from the project here. So you can see right here, document is in folder 1002. I'm going to go into general properties created by. And don't ever use a, not a mouse. That's what happened there. <laughs> and then click add criteria so we can um, add that in. And now I can save it to this project specific. So if I wanted to do something um, more specific to a project, I can do that. If I accidentally selected the wrong PID, which I did 1002, you can click browse and select the correct PID that you'd like to save that under. So here I'm going to name it my docs, um, similar to what I did in the data source. Um, and now you can see that saved search has been saved under personal. Uh, so if I click that, it's going to search for all documents under that project. I, this is a fake project, so there's no documents I've ever created, but uh, you can kind of see it, it will notify you that there are no documents of yours created based on your, your results. So another way um, we want to go over searching is in the connected project. Um, this is fairly new. We have done webinars on this uh, for uh, several districts. So we're still working on some other districts. Um, but I want to go over the connected project and how the searching capability works there. So here we're on ProjectWise Web and we're inside a connected project, as you can see. Um, I can select the drop down here and click advanced so I can build my query from here. So I can do documents or folders, um, environment, you don't really need to worry about. Uh, I just do any. And then I can select the field. So 
what do I want to look for? I want to look at all documents that are locked. Locked essentially means that somebody has it checked out. So I say locked equals true. And now it shows me all the documents that have been checked out by and, and which user. So now I can see that Jack has four, I have three, and then there's a uh, test planning uh, account that has something checked out as well. Um, if you had saved searches for that PID, you would actually see it under here. So you can see that global and personal. Um, since this is a test connected project, we didn't have any saved searches, but I didn't want to show you that that had the capabilities of doing it. So that was a pretty quick uh, overview of all the searches. Um, we actually have several videos on our wiki page. It's one place that we organize all our available training content. Um, so we have webinars and videos up on our wiki page, which that is linked there. Um, and we also have the form stack. Uh, so you, what form stack is, you can click on that service request. And it's actually going to send an email to the CAD and project wise section. Um, so if you have any issues or have any, uh, any, any recommended videos that you'd like to see or training material that you'd like to be set up or, or, or made video of, you can always uh, submit that in a form stack um, as well if you have any issues. So I just wanted to point that out there uh, for the wiki page and the form stack is as great material uh, to learn for the project wise stuff. There's some webinars. It's not just project wise. There's ORD stuff there as well. Uh, then we have form stack um, for any service requests that you might have. So just wanted to go ahead and hand that out uh, and make sure everyone's aware of that. So that's actually all that I have uh, for searching. Searching, uh, you know, it was quick, um, but I'd, I'd like to hear some feedback on what you guys would like to see um, in some other videos. Uh, but first I wanna see if Jack or Kyle, if you're on the call, if you had anything you'd like to add, anything that I might've missed uh, that we can go over. No, I think that's that's good. Um, yeah, we we looked into the adding additional people allowed to create global searches, and right now that you have to be admin to do it because you have to have right access at the root of the project. But we did put in a ticket on that, so maybe Bentley will figure out some way to to allow that. But in the meantime, if you have something that uh, makes sense to create as a global search, you can just uh, send it to us. Uh, let us know what it is and we'll, we'll add it. Um, Brandon showed the one he added for uh, at the project level to determine what, what files were checked out and that one will be there in all newly created projects. So down the road, you'll be able to go down there and click on that and see what's uh, checked out. Might come in handy as a project nearest completion just to make sure everybody's getting their files checked in. So if anybody has any questions about uh, searching, uh, go ahead and uh, fire away. Did you have anything to add, Kyle? No, I just wanted to say that in the chat that I did add uh, links to the wiki page, the form stack request uh, form, and then I also added uh, a link to where this webinar is going to be posted and all of our future webinars on, on project-wise topics. So the other thing we're looking for is uh, uh, future topics uh, for the next uh, next few months. Right now, we're we don't have anything in particular, so we'll come up with something if we don't hear from somebody. But if you have something you'd like to see, uh, yeah, please uh, shoot us an email, let us know, and we'll put together a little um, webinar on it. Does uh, do you guys actually uh, see a good use for that global search um, to see all documents that are checked out for that project? Um, are there any other global searches for a project that you think uh, would be useful? Uh, are you do you, do you guys find yourself trying to find a file and and and, and you know after seeing today is or is it, you think that's going to be easier to search uh, for what you're looking for? Yeah, we had some comments in the chat about global searches for uh, on the project manager side being a good thing. Um, 
I, I completely agree. I think this will really help, especially when you're starting to, to close the, the project out and see what what still what loose ends might still be out there or if somebody's still editing something or um, has it checked out to them. So yeah, no, I definitely think that's that's a good thing for the on the project manager side. That's a good good comment. Somebody asked about emailing the app for finding a PDF. Did you see that one, Kyle? Oh, yep. Yeah, no, I missed that one. Um, so we actually did a couple examples of, of doing links um, as well. So I guess it kind of depends on how the user is going to be interacting with it. If it's somebody that's inside our project wise and actively working, um, I would rather send a link instead of attaching that static document to it. Um, but uh, you you can easily add it as a as an attachment as well to to an email. Um, it's an easy way to drag and drop. Um, let me test that out. I'm actually haven't done it that way, so let me see if there's an easy way to do it that way. Yeah, so there's several options for you know Project Wise Explorer. Um, also, you know with Outlook, you have that Project Wise tab if you have that DLL enabled. Um, so that's a way that you can attach uh, PDFs. Um, also with uh, connected projects, which we showed here at the little end, at the end there, it's just that one video on the search. Um, pro a connected project actually has uh, a way for you to just link to a connected project and or Project Wise Explorer, so that's pretty neat as well. Hey Brandon, this is Matt. Hey Matt. The question about um, attaching to an email if you right click on the document and go to send to you can do mail recipient and then it'll um, launch a new email that you can attach that email to or attach that file to yep and that's that's another good way i forget about that that one as well i think you can um i think you can do multi-selection as well is that correct yep. like if you had multiple hold control right click and then do a send to uh mail recipient recipient uh, you can also do a link there as well if you didn't um, want to send the actual attachment uh, i believe as well So he wants to know if you can send it as a return on a re return email. So I suppose like as a reply and attach it that way. Yeah, so that, that drag and drop operation um, just creates a link as an attachment, which that's probably not the most ideal way to, to send something. Um, but if you do have that project wise tab enabled, you can uh, click on the project wise tab, uh, project wise tab, and do a, a attached document. And you can do all those searches that we were showing inside the insert document uh, field as well through through your email itself. So hopefully that kind of clears things up a little bit. So Lawton asked about the add-ins or DLL files globally put onto all machines. So I guess he's asking about the the plugins for Excel and um, the Office products. I mean, I think they're they they're on there when it gets installed. Up to, I'm not sure how to automatically enable 
It'd Senate, have to be so. a registry, I would assume. Um, maybe yeah. during the install, we can. Yeah. And Bluebeam as well. So you got to go into Bluebeam and have to add the add the plugins for Bluebeam. It seems like with Bluebeam you could do it during the install. But yeah, actually, um, I remember um, in Bluebeam. When you install a product, there's a parameter you can pass to enable that automatically. Um, we looked into it. Um, it was a little little odd. I, I've never really seen an install like that before. But um, we got to work on a couple machines and then didn't work on one machine. Uh, I don't think we've revisited that. Remember that, Jack? Um, it was like numbers. You pass yeah, in the parameter. Exactly. Oh, that's right. Yeah, the, there was like the plugins were like, a, yeah, it was like a hexadecimal field so you had to put in like 216 or something to get bluebeam and and excel or something like that and it didn't really work it was kind of weird so yeah, looks, yeah, we'll take a look at that again though to see it looks like uh thomas has instructions how to do that on bluebeam as well i know that uh, we also had a bluebeam webinar uh that mark was a part of um that they Bluebeam actually came and uh, presented. Was it Bluebeam? I think it was Bluebeam that came and presented on how to set it up and how how it is integrated with Project Wise. Um, on that wiki page, we also have some Bluebeam videos on how to how to log in with Bluebeam, so you can open up files just through Bluebeam um, and, and things like that, and how to start a studio session inside Project Wise. So there's a couple videos on that wiki page for that. Yep, we will look into that. See if we can figure out how to, to do the plugins automatically when it gets installed. That would be nice if it did that. So do we have any other questions? Uh, what are some things that you guys would like to see next month? Uh, is there something you're struggling with that you'd like us to do a webinar on or create videos for? Well, if you come up with something you, you'd like to see, shoot us an email, let us know. We'll uh, put together something. All right, well, if there's nothing else, then 